Chairman Stant will describe the 2000s. Uh, Chairman Stant is a lifelong resident of Tidewater, 1967 honors graduate of the University of Virginia, where he also graduated law school in 1970. Founding principal of Clark and Stant, which merged with Williams Mullen Law Firm in 1999. Mr. Stant retired from the firm in the private practice of law in 2012, allegedly. He probably still gives a good 20 to 30 hours a week in that capacity. He was appointed to the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel Commission as its Virginia Beach representative in May of 2012 and was elected chairman of the commission in January 2014. Mr. Stant currently serves as director of the Virginia Military Aviation Museum as well. Join me in welcoming Chairman Fred Stant. I guess going off script is uh, the way everybody's cho chosen to go here, and I thought instead of retelling the current events of, of then 2000, that I'd probably talk about something that probably affected most of us in this room. Um, on September the 6th, 2003, in the Atlantic Ocean, Hurricane Isabel formed from a tropical wave. It moved northward in an environment of light wind shear and, and, and warm water. It strengthened steadily until it, to reach peak winds of 165 miles an hour. On September the 18th, Isabel made landfall in the Outer Banks with sustained winds of 105 miles an hour and moved no northward towards its facility. Isabel proved to be the costliest natural disaster in the history of the Commonwealth. Strong winds affected 99 Virginia cities and counties, down, <clears throat> down thousands of trees, and left almost 2 million homes without power. In Virginia, Isabel caused almost $2 billion in damages and 36 deaths, direct and indirect. It destroyed or severely damaged over 10,000 homes. At this bridge tunnel, Isabel produced a 7.5-foot storm surge, flooding much of the seaside of Northampton County. The same storm surge surpassed the, the floodgates at the Midtown Tunnel in Portsmouth, and 44 million gallons of water flooded into the tunnel and ended up closing it for a week. Seven miles north of the North Toll Plaza, uh, at, a sea, at a seaside hunting lodge that uh, was built over 100 years ago that is owned by me and my friend Tom Stokes, Isabel left a watermark four feet on our chimney and an inch of mud on the floor. The inch of, <clears throat> the inch of mud was gotten out of the home by Barry Knight, who can't, who's not much of a flounder fisherman, but he does know how to operate a power washer. <laughs> <laughs> Power washers were used to sluice the mud out of the hose, out the doors, and into the crawl space. Um, that, in that same house, the evidence of, a, of the 1933 storm here left a, about a six-foot mark, watermark in the building. But Isabel only caused a moderate amount of damage to this bridge tunnel. Islands two and four experienced the most damage, consisting of washout and debris that had washed over the sides into the tunnel. You look out the window, you can see those huge boulders that weigh between eight and 12 tons, and they're about, uh, roughly eight by eight by eight. Though, many of those same stones were moved by wind, by 20-foot waves pushed up by the, by the storm surge. So those boulders move. As I said, the damage to the facility caused by Isabel was not significant, and that's a tribute to its design and construction. But it's also a tribute to the maintenance that gets done here and the constant struggle against the most hostile marine environment of any similar facility in the world. Design and construction don't tell the whole story. The rest of the story is maintenance and the day-to-day -day fight against the elements like those we are experiencing here today. Maintenance comes at a, at a price, an expensive price. This fiscal year, we budgeted almost $30 million in capital expenses and maintenance expenses. That's what it takes to keep this facility above water and in the condition that you see here today. So in closing, the next time you drive north on the bridge tunnel across the little bridge linking Fisherman's Island to the eastern shore, or south from the eastern shore towards the little bridge just before you reach the southern tip of, the, of Wise Point, look to the east. 
Look at the skeletons of those hundreds of 50 to 60 foot pine trees killed by the storm surge of Isabel. And the 10 foot new growth pines that have sprouted since, since that storm. Remember that the bridge tunnel survived all the power of Isabel and think of the lasting legacy of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel and marvel at what the 2000, December 2000 edition of the Structural Engineer recognizes one of the seven structural wonders of the 20th century. Thank you.